This video is about a site or a service that I came across last week that I think is going to be very popular with Strava users. I've been using it for the last week and I absolutely love what it does. It's called Activity Fix and it allows you to create custom rules based on your activities and have your activities automatically updated on Strava based on those rules. To run through a few example rules of what Activity Fix can do, let's just say your daily commute goes from home to work and the reverse, you can have a rule set up to automatically mark those activities as commute. Let's say your ride goes through a local forest where you'll never be riding your road bike, you can automatically then assign your mountain bike or gravel bike to that activity. Or something that I would have loved to have seen Strava implement with their newly announced mute activity function, and that is the ability to mute based on, well, with Activity Fix, we can mute any activity that matches any of our rules. For example, if you want to mute all your Peloton rides, you can do that. Maybe you want to mute all Zwift rides under 10 kilometers. That can also be done automatically with Activity Fix. That would really clean up a lot of our feed spam we get with people who do a warm up before a Zwift race or a Zwift event and double post their Zwift activities. Maybe you want to mute your hikes, your walks, your e-bike rides, that can all be done too. And for the more advanced users, you can also connect Activity Fix to both Garmin Connect and the Wahoo Cloud to detect the sensors used in your activity and then apply rules based on those. So for example, you can assign a bike that has a certain power meter, or maybe your ETAP or DI2 module is detected, and then you can assign a bike type for that too. Those examples are just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with Activity Fix. It's very powerful and there are millions of combinations of rules that you can come up with. So you can no doubt see why this is going to be a very popular tool for Strava users. The Activity Fix website has a cute little summary of how this all works, and I do like their tagline of getting started with Activity Fix is easy AF. You simply connect your Strava account to Activity Fix and you're good to go. You then create rules, which I'll run you through in just a moment, and your activities will be automatically updated based on the rules that you've created. With your Strava account now associated with Activity Fix, you log into the dashboard, which looks like this. First of all, being presented here with what's new. Now, this is a relatively new service. It's rapidly changing, lots of fixes, lots of new features being added in quick succession. So it's all listed here on the main page. Over on the left, you have rules, Add rules, saved sensors for your Ant Plus sensors. There's a counters section, which I'll skip over today. That's for the more advanced users. Activity processing history, where you can check and debug your rules. FAQ, help and tutorial. And if you do like this service, I do recommend donating to the developer. Scrolling back up to add a rule, and I'll go through the process of creating the rule based on one of the examples that I mentioned at the start of the video. That will be to mute Zwift rides less than 10 kilometers. That's as simple as going up and adding rule. Kicking off with the ride name, I have a few that I've already tested. Let's go with Zwift Ride less than 10Ks. Onto what should be changed. Now we can go deep into the technical weeds here with adding custom counters and adding some activity statistics from the Strava activity and then update the title or description based on those. I won't show those now. I'll touch on those in just a moment though. I'm trying to keep things basic for this small example. Okay, what to update? We can. Set the gear used, we can set description, we can add to the description, set the title, add to title, set activity type, mark as commute, mark as train ride, or mute activity. And that's the one we're after. But if I do mute this activity, I wanna know why it's muted. So we can add, set description, or add to description, AF muted, um, less than 10K, oh, 190. Right, okay. So this will mute the activity and add to description so I know what's going on. Now to scroll down to when should it be changed. So the rules that will then match the rides. And this gets, well this gets pretty cool. There's a ton we can do here. Set condition, so starting location, ending location, a route proximity, so some geo based rules. Activity type, amp plus sensors, distance, average speed, day of week, start time, is train and ride, power data, elevation, elevation distance, recording device and title. Distance is what we're after is less than 10 kilometers and set condition, the recording device contains Zwift. So any Zwift ride uploaded to Strava that is less than 10 Ks, it will be muted from public feeds. It will still be on my profile though, if you want to snoop at that level and it will have the description updated so I know what's going on. There's also an option there to stop processing any subsequent rules if the rule matches. Again, more than technical side of things, I will leave that on for now so all rules apply. Now to test that rule, 
pop up, we can cut and paste a previous rule in here. Now these rules won't apply to this particular example. It's just a test case to make sure our rules are working. We hit test rule, boom. Distance less than 10 kilometers. Yes, that's a match. Recording device contains Zwift. Yes, that's a match. So their little example there, which is using some test data, we can't tell if a ride is muted or not on here, but we can see the description has been updated. AF muted, less than 10K Zwift ride. It's also worth noting, and they do have a little FAQ up here. If you have rules that match AMP plus sensors, you can't run this test. And this is due to how Activity Fix interfaces with both Garmin Connect and the Wahoo Cloud. So you'll need to do some other testing on those. Okay, with that in place, we hit save rule and job done. A very basic rule now in place. Jumping over to all of my rules, which are quite comprehensive, and I'll run you through top to bottom of what I've been testing out in the last week or so. Rule number one, Llama lab test. So if my title of my activity contains the words Llama lab test, it's going to add the little bar graph emoji to the description, and it will stop processing any further rules on those. The next rule, mute short test rides, which has been very handy for the little test rides I've been doing with the sensor detection. So any ride less than three kilometers, mute the activity. Hikes done on the element rival, any walks done on the element rival, they're also muted. But as well as muting, I'm also setting my shoes to the hokers that I'm currently wearing. Further down the list, I have a number of power meter rules that will add the power meter used to the activity description. Power Max Injico, Asioma Duo Shees, the Axo, the Duos, Garmin Rally, Giant Halo. Now with these two, I have added some additional funkiness or some additional statistics to the description. So if I'm using the Garmin Rally, it will put in the description, Garmin Rally, it will then add a new line with a slash N and also show the average power, normalized power and max power. And this is the resulting matched ride over on Strava. So it's added power meter, Garmin Rally. It's added the average power, normalized power and max. Although I can't tell this ride is muted by any option here on the screen, I can see it's only got one kudos, which gives me a good indication it's muted. And because I have another rule further down in my activity fix rule sets that matches the ETAP ant sensor, the bike has been set to my Aspero gravel bike. Further down in my rule set, I have a geo-based rule, which also works very well. If my ride goes within 2000 meters of a certain pinpoint in the Creswick Forest, the gear used will be set to the Aspero, and the ride description will have added to it, hashtag Creswick Forest with a little tree. I'll show you how the route proximity stuff works. We go edit, here's the rule set here, and route proximity within 2000 meters of this. Uh, when editing this, it goes back to 1000 meters. I'll go back to two zoom in and none of those roads are sealed roads so i'll always be on my gravel bike doing any of those rule number 12 is my sram axis rule if it detects the sram axis as a sensor in my activity set the bike to my aspero and finally lucky rule number 13 that we've added there mute activity add to the description when the distance is less than 10 kilometers and i've ridden on zwift i can see the description though is cut off there with only one bracket if we hit edit it might be a display issue here no less than 10K ride, we'll update that, save rule, my rules. <laughs> In real time, I found a small bug with that. Uh, let's <laughs> edit that and take out the, there we go, save rule. Greater than and less than encode can be a bit of a problem. sorted. One last tip with the rule sets is that you can drag and drop them to change the ordering as you please. Popping into the saved sensors configuration, which is optional, you can see I have quite a few configured here already. These are configured by uploading your fit files manually with the sensor data, selecting the sensors you want to save, naming them, and then creating rules based on those. It's quite straightforward. It's also optional. For the more advanced users, you can set counters. I haven't done any of these myself, but if you want to add, say, ride one, ride two, ride three, or similar to the description or the title of your rides and have those loop around or reset, there's quite a few things you can configure here, not something I've looked into yet, and activity processing history, which is quite powerful. This will allow you to debug your rules and rides to see what's matching, what's not, and maybe tweak a few things before you set and forget. My evening ride last night, for example, it runs through all the rule sets here. So was it a Llama lab test? No, it wasn't. Was it less than three Ks? Yes, it was. Was it a ride? Yes, okay, so it matched mute short test rides. That ride was muted from Strava. Was it a hike? No. Was it a walk? No. 
um, and then did it match any of the sensors? No, no, no. And I had the Garmin rallies on that bike, it matched. So it put the Garmin rally information in the description. And scrolling down, was it within the forest? No, and did I have the SRAM Axis module on that bike? Yes, so the bike was set to my Aspero. Okay, before wrapping this video up on this super cool little tool for Strava, if you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much for your support. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that button. It really helps out. And with that, onto my final notes and tips and tricks for this site. First of all, Strava doesn't allow privacy changes via the API. So Activity Fix won't be able to change your activities from public to followers to private. The closest you'll get for privacy with this tool is using the mute functionality. All rules or rule changes only apply to future activities. It doesn't have the ability to look back and change any of your history on Strava. As already mentioned, but worth covering again, you can't test rules that have ant plus sensors. That's due to the way Activity Fix interacts with third parties, Garmin Connect and Wahoo Cloud. Also, some ant sensor information is limited. Sometimes they don't actually have an ID associated in the fit file. Examples being ETAP and DI2, the module units won't have a listed ant ID. So if you have multiple bikes with those sensors, you'll need to create other rules to identify the bikes. Use a power meter or a speed sensor or something in its place. Another thing that caught me out with Strava this week was manual fit file uploads. Now, as soon as you upload the file, before you even hit save, Strava's already posted that to your profile. So if you take a minute or two to type the title, description, and do any of the changes, Activity Fix already comes in, makes the changes, disappears, and then when you hit save over here, they get overwritten. Ideally, Strava shouldn't be posting anything to your profile until you're happy with it and hit save, but that's just the way it is with Strava. Automatic uploads, if you're uploading to say Garmin Connect and Strava without any interaction, are unaffected by this problem. And finally, there's a comprehensive FAQ and privacy section over on the activityfix.com website. So if you have any concerns, jump over to there and see if your question has already been answered. So there we have it, activityfix.com for Strava, a super powerful little tool that I'll be using daily. Well, it's automatic, so it'll be sitting there in the background doing its thing daily anyway. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.